Okay, folks, Mark Dwyer here. Welcome to yet another rousing edition of Ask Mark Anything. Today's question is uh, a little beauty. I'll just get my notes ready there. Yeah, it's um, it's one that I'm getting a lot from uh, salespeople as it pertains to consistency of performance. And of course, we all know that no matter how good those really good months are, of course, if you follow that up with a bad month, it pretty much cancels it out. Now, this is a syndrome, if you like, that's fairly common in the real estate industry. And I'll give you some credence as to how it all works. Um, I call it the one in four syndrome. Now, before we get into the syndrome itself, I'll also try to give you some sort of understanding as to why you find yourself in this in this particular area. Just give me one second. Awfully distracting in the back. Okay, yeah. So why does this syndrome occur? Well, it's fairly fairly syndrome. Fairly simplistic. The first thing is, a lot of us rely on skill. We rely on skill to win listings. We rely on skill to, of course, uh, get us uh, prospects in some respects. We rely on energy. And the two things that I say that underpin skill become the problem. Now, I say the two major ingredients, these are also affected. So let's just get to those two skills. Let me, let me explain. The first thing that drives your skill at any one time is your level of confidence. If you win five listings in a row against the competitor you detest the most, well then typically you tend to win more listings on top of that. So if you went from Monday through to Friday up against the, not just the agency or the brand that is your fiercest competitor, but also the person in there, you know that one that often gets away with you, and you go those five listings and you lose every one of them. Now my guess is, by the time Saturday rolls around, if you had a listing appointment, you're not feeling very good about it. In fact, you might even call in sick. Now conversely, if you go from Monday through Friday and you win every one of those listings, well come Friday, you can actually knock on the wrong door, in my opinion, and come away with a listing. So the first thing that underpins your delivery of your skill at any one time is your confidence. The second thing is this, you know, we all talk about being able to manage hostility, manage um, or handle objections, handle angst. So of course we come into the office and those of us that have been around for a while, we have a seller that might call in and they've got some problem, an issue, whatever it might be. Now I know with a great deal of skill, you can diffuse that issue and restore confidence back of that seller across to you. Now I call this reactive behavior, it adds up to work. But if prior to handling that call, you were last seen the evening before, swinging from a chandelier, dancing on a bar, singing an unmentionable tune, and now you've woken up in the morning with what feels like an ax in the back of your head, you've had a bit of fun, you've got a hangover, and now you have to confront that issue with that owner well, you're not likely to deliver that skill on the same level. So you see the two things that underpin skill are your feelings and your level of confidence at any one time. Now conversely, the two things, if we start to look at process, systematic process, it operates on a completely different platform. Now, I'm not saying that skill doesn't play a role in the real estate business, it certainly does, but we need to start to dilute it because you see, when you replace skill with anticipative process, systematic process, things start to change. What do I mean by that? Well, the two changes that you're looking to deliver, as I've talked about, is an, in anticipation, is a sequence of events that mitigate any need for reactive behavior, and then, of course, putting deadlines in place. Now, you see, you get good processes in place. It really doesn't matter how you feel at any one time, and certainly a level of confidence is not that important because we know that the process is going to deliver definitive outcomes. Now, you're all sitting there saying, what the hell has this got to do, I imagine, 
with my consistency of performance. Well, let's start to put this into a definable understanding of what's going on. Let's look at this, what we call the one in four syndrome and how it operates. You start from a standing start. Now, most of you will find that when you look at this in a cycle, you find yourself falling back to that beginning time and time again. But from a standing start, our obvious focus in the game of selling real estate is to focus on getting prospects that are active in the first instance that will enable listing presentations that will, of course, lead to listings. Now, if this is your primary focus from a standing start in month one, you go at it, you put all the gusto in, and you are more than happy to start to look at not just getting the prospects, but facing, if you like, the grind associated with that. And your enthusiasm, although important, might not be at a very high optimum level, you constantly need to pump yourself up or perhaps need some motivation from a leader or a trainer or something like that. So there's month one. Now during month one, when you are completely focused on prospects, you will start to win those prospects, but it's usually at the expense, given that you don't have many listings of sales. So that first month is always a disastrous month as it relates to sales. They are extremely low if at all. Sometimes we don't make sales at all. Now, once you get through that first month, given that we've done this prospect, prospecting, we've now come along with a lot of uh, leads, if you like, active property sellers, those researching the market in gestation. And then, of course, our focus is now drawn to listing those properties. So in month two, you start to put all of your energy into winning those listings. And of course, with the follow-up, with the presentations themselves, you start to win a couple of listings. And invariably during the course of this month, in winning those listings, the good ones are almost immediately snapped up. And for a lot of us, while we get to this, you know, we could be the six week mark, the five week mark, seven week mark, and you start to make a couple of sales because the good listings are snapped up immediately. We kind of dodge the bullet and everything looks okay. Now, how are we looking with the listings? Well, the sales are very few, even though we make enough to just get by. But this, of course, turns our level of enthusiasm into a, into a space of ambivalence. And our confidence is still a little bit uncertain because we even might start to question things. Of course, those of us that have resolved ourselves to prospecting methods that are, lead to dormant property owners, populating databases, this can really tax our enthusiasm and level of confidence. Now, but now we've gone through month two, we've made just a few sales. Now, at the end of that month, you are now left with a bunch of listings that are likely overly ambitious in their price expectation, or you haven't had the time to zero in on the seller's motive and work with them to get that price expectation under control. So invariably, what do we do? we then put our energy into managing that price expectation, or as we like to say at Sales Trainer, reducing those properties in asking price so that more buyers can come along and they can sell. Now, of course, if all of your energy is now focused into reducing the properties to sell, invariably, as you reduce a couple of those, the good ones are going to get again snapped up. You make a few sales during the course of that month as some of these people concede that they need to bring their property expectation or the price expectation back, and of course they sell. And now you move into that fourth month. So at the end of this third month, your enthusiasm is improving and your confidence is starting to return as these properties come back and you move into that fourth month, you don't really even need anyone to talk about where your focus ought to be because invariably it is immediately centered on making sales. And of course that fourth month is a sales bonanza. All of the properties that you reduced are snapped up. Of course there are some, if you're lucky, if you're focused on it, uh, that you can actually then leverage back into listings, but invariably, as we get to the end of that month, notwithstanding that our level of enthusiasm and confidence is now at an optimum, our enthusiasm is almost contagious as we're kind of walking around 10 foot tall and bulletproof, having made a whole bunch of sales on this boom month. And of course, our enthusiasm 
or our level of confidence, I'm sorry, is supreme. We're at the top of our game. But of course, you get to the end of that month and you just walk in to a complete drought. Mainly because you haven't focused on prospecting and then you find yourself moving back into that first month where we're going to be looking forward to no sales, but unfortunately having to face the grind around prospecting that we faced in the first instance. So invariably you add those four months up in the terms of a cycle, invariably over a 12 month period you'll find that you have uh, three absolutely sensational months that it's the end of this one in four syndrome. You most certainly have three absolute disasters which literally cancel out those great months. And then of course you have half a dozen months where you're doing or feeling like you're doing just enough to get by. So we tend to go through these highs and lows and it's what I call riding the real estate roller coaster, which we ride every day. You come into the office, there's a call online too, somebody says, after that presentation last night, I'm gonna list with you. Everything's on the up, chink, 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 as we head up that hill on that roller coaster. You get another call or somebody calls in and says that the deal that they were going ahead with the next day, they've decided to pull out. Ah, we're sliding back down that roller coaster. So what we're talking about here is how do we iron out those peaks and troughs so that we get steadfast control of our productivity, of our performance. Well, the first thing to do, you need to do, is to create stability. Now, if you go back to this one in four syndrome, I can clearly identify for you where the problem exists. It exists fundamentally in the fact that you are allowing your focus to shift. You're moving from prospecting, you know, one month, then moving into just focusing on listing, then you're focusing on managing the price expectation, and then, of course, you're focused on selling. Now, I, I get it. Some of you would argue that that's not quite true, but I've got to tell you, I've seen this a bun bunch of times. It doesn't just happen with individual salespeople. It happens with entire teams at the same time. So how do you arrest that control? Well, it's pretty simplistic. What you need to recognize is the key to controlling your productivity lies fundamentally with you engaging in all four of those activities on a daily basis, but primarily never, ever, ever allowing the prospecting ball, and in particular, majorly, the listing ball to be dropped. You simply must have a listing every day. So how do we work this through? Well, let's give you some ideas and understanding. What we say at Sales Trainer is that listing always comes before selling no matter what. It's the only ball you can't afford to drop. You see, there's many things that actually happen inside the real estate world that are literally beyond your control. I'll give you an insight into these. You can't control buyer sentiment with, to any degree. You can't control fiscal policy. You cannot control what your competitors might be doing with their listings, nor can you control whether owners are allowing their properties to sell at a lower rate than yours. These things are beyond your control. The only thing that is really inside your control is the marketing of properties, so creating those perceptions, the negotiation parameters you create, and indeed your communicative skills. Now, again, this comes back to skill, but in a process fashion, there's one thing that is always in your control. There is no such thing as a listing sum. So the key to ironing out that one in four syndrome in the first instance is making sure that you have daily listing presentations with active property sellers. Now, how do you determine an active property seller? That's somebody who is listing their property right now, imminently, or in the next few weeks. They are property sellers that are actively researching the market ahead of listing their property. This should be your primary focus. And not only should it be your primary focus on a daily basis to maintain stability, it should also be a focus, focal point, I should say, in terms of making sure that your day is set up correctly. So the key to controlling consistency is not only allowing those four things to occur each day, but the primary focus on a daily basis is securing a listing 
presentation, an appointment for a listing presentation, the following working day. So in other words, you are prospecting the day before the next working day with a primary target of ensuring that you have a listing presentation. Beyond this, you put all of your energy into listing properties. Listing always comes exclusively before selling. And once you've actually mastered the art of getting this in order, because you simply cannot get into trouble in this business listing property, to avoid the one in four syndrome, put all of your energy into the front end on prospecting properties. And once you get stability in this area, then and only then can you start to increase your capacity because you'll understand how it is that you are mastering the production line of sales. I hope that's uh, helped you out. Any questions that you have about this, please pop them in below. I'll be sure to type them across to you. And join me next week for another rousing edition of Ask Mark Anything.